What is going on, guys? What's in that box, you ask? Well, looking at it, you probably already know. Judging by the title, you already know. We're going to do a radiator today, unfortunately. Uh, this is actually a really super easy job. I should have done it months ago, but I've been putting it off. But I had a little drip. Uh, only when it wanted to, though. I go cruise this thing for hours, wouldn't drip at all. Want to go to dinner, have a puddle in the parking lot. So, time to change it out. Uh, it's gotten to where it's not drivable anymore. It's leaking so bad. But let's get into it. I'll show you all the tools we need. Like I said, it is a really, really easy job. Uh, if you've changed the fuel pump on these, you can definitely change the radiator. So with that being said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get to it because I'm ready to cruise. Uh, one more thing, if you have a tow package, you will have a clutch fan, I guess, idler fan. You'll have an actual mechanical fan. Uh, you'll have to remove that more than likely. You'll definitely have to remove your shroud. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, they're kind of a rare option, but they are out there. Step one, pop the hood. And if your car is like 90% of other Cadillacs I have, it won't lift right up. In my black Cadillac, the only one that actually pops up like it's supposed to. Just give her a little wiggle. Uh, one thing I will say, when lifting up on the hood, I don't put my hand on the grill, because if you ever notice, they get little rust spots right here. That's usually what that's from. So I try and just grab the uh, lever itself and that little brace, you know. All right, if yours isn't leaking, if you have some other problem, like a blockage or something like that, uh, you will want to drain your coolant. Down there on the bottom, driver's side, uh, there's a little screw called a petcock. You turn it, I think a quarter turn, maybe half turn. It pops out and coolant will drain. All right, that's really hard to get you guys in there. There it is. You see that little piece of white plastic that's not really in focus? That's what it is. You just turn it and drain all your coolant out. So a brief rundown of what we're going to be doing. We got our transmission cooling lines there and there. We're going to leave the fan assembly connected to the radiator. There is a plug right here that we need to unplug. These two, if I remember correctly, they stay together. Yes, I think. I don't know. We'll get into that. You got your lower radiator hose down there. I think it's going to be probably easiest access from the bottom. Uh, down there, right there. That's our engine oil cooler line. We got another one right there. And then we got our upper radiator hose. Our top bolts. Uh, this is the only thing that holds the radiator in the car. We'll pop that up. The radiator comes straight up. All right, for our lower radiator hose and our upper, this tool right here, it is not necessary, but man, it makes it so much easier. For those little spring clamps, it just grabs them, clicks in, and ratchets and holds it. So you don't have to worry about holding the clamp and getting the hose off. Uh, they're at the parts store. Maybe 20 bucks now, I guess. I don't know, but they're totally worth it. Now, one thing I definitely love about Fleetwoods, they give you all this extra room to step in and work. Check this out. That is so nice. You can get in here. You don't have to be bending over, killing your back. Now, you can see my little tool here. I got it on down there. Uh, your clamp probably isn't this way. I think I did that last time just because I was working just like this. I've had this radiator in and out multiple times. I've done distributor on this. I've done time and chain. Hmm, don't get me started on that story. But yeah, it's pretty easy. So we're going to pull that lower radiator hose. Got me a pan down there. Try and catch my coolant. If you don't know, coolant is dangerous to animals. Uh, they're attracted to it. It's pretty sweet stuff. So that's why they want to drink it. So we're going to catch as much as we can. All right, we got our tension off our spring clamp on our hose. Let's pull our lower radiator hose. See if we can cover our shoes with coolant. All those coolants in there. It's a good thing we... Put our pan down there. Another good thing about this little tool is it holds the clamp so it doesn't go flying all over. You just release it, try to pinch your fingers, boom. We'll go ahead and get the top one while we're here. One more little piece of advice. Uh, if you get a stubborn hose, they can make some tools like these. They're awesome. They stick in there and you just kind of like run them around like that. Usually get them loose. Uh, sometimes you can get a big pair of channel locks, put them on there and twist them, and they'll usually break loose. But yeah, if you get a really stubborn one, uh, these are the ticket. You can use a flathead screwdriver, but this is just way better in my opinion. Uh, took me a while to buy one of these to break down. I have always used flatheads. I want to say I struggle love. That hose is giving me a real fight, so I broke down and bought them, and they've been awesome ever since. One more thing I just thought of. On a factory Fleetwood, you got your airbox here. You may have to remove that. I'll look at my black one and see, but uh, I think you can do it without removing it. Almost positive. You may have to remove this, you know, because the tube comes through here. But I'll look and I'll double check just to be sure. All right, on the stock vehicle, you will have to remove this. Uh, just unscrew it right there. And really unscrew it right there. And you should be pretty good. Just get that box out of the way and you'll be A-OK. -okay. All right, we got our fans. Uh, this little thing here just pulls up. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. So be prepared for that. Lift up your little tab. I want to say the female side is stuck to the fans. 
Should be able to wiggle this with one hand. Yes, perfect. Uh, it won't always be that easy. Yeah, you just pull that little tab up, pull it straight out, and it'll be good to go. Then you gotta put it back together. Not a bad idea, put a little bit of dielectric grease in there. I don't know if you can see that little wrench down there. It is a 16 millimeter. I have a line wrench. You can use a regular, but I would suggest a line wrench for sure. I'm starting with my bottom. That way if it does leak at all, I'm not getting oil all over my hands from starting by the top one first, if that makes sense. And we got our lower uh, transmission cooler line off. About to take the top off. If you're admiring that battery tie down there, I do a video for it too. It utilizes the stock battery tray. holds it really good without having to build a frame that goes down to the frame of the car and put a link up in the corner for that. I want to check that out as well. Wiggle that to get it out of there just like so. Totally missed the drain pan on that one. I had to slide it forward a little bit more. All right now we're going to move on to our engine oil cooler lines. Same deal. Uh, so far the top one's a 16 millimeter. I do believe the bottom is a 16 as well. So I'm going to throw a drain pan under there on this side. Hopefully catch a mess and get them unthreaded. All right, so we're going to undo our bottom engine oil cooler line. And of course, if any one of them are gonna be a problem, it's gonna be one that's hard to get to. Um, hopefully you can see them wrenches there. What I did, the one on the left, I started with, and I started to take my line loose. And of course, it wanted to unthread from the uh, radiator itself. And I don't believe that piece is supposed to come out. Granted, this thing is broken, I could just rip it out. But I'm going to try and double up my wrenches. Um, hopefully you can see the configuration I have them in. Let me get you a little bit lower. There you go. I put them that way because basically I can squeeze both of them together. The one on the left will be going up. The one on the right will be going down. If that makes any sense. And uh, kind of use you know leverage off of one another to make this a little bit easier. Because you can't really get in there very well. So that configuration didn't work out as good as it usually does. So now what I have is my secondary wrench. I got it going straight up. That way it leans on the frame and uh, use the frame as a stopping point and then i can just pull on my bottom one there we'll see how it goes it is uh it will unthread out of the radiator but unfortunately it won't spin on that hose that's where the problem comes in and we got that out of the way on the bottom now we're gonna do our upper upper will probably be the exact same honestly yep it is so using a 19 millimeter on those kind of working against myself here but i don't think it's that tight hello mr deberton yep don't do like that as I was kind of trying to do down there, put your wrenches like this. You can squeeze them together just like that, and they come loose very simply. Use yourself for leverage. All right, we got that off. I'm kind of leave it there, dripping a little bit. Not too bad, and then we'll get ready to pull the radiator out. All right, we're gonna take apart our main support for our radiator. Looks like I got two cracked, that's not good. Uh, should be 10 millimeter. Yep. So if not, I'll just edit that out. right up and falls apart all right double check just make sure we do have everything loose uh we'll have to fight this transmission line just a little bit don't think it'll be too terrible because i'm gonna hold this back with my hand pull it straight up with my other hand just like that we're pulling everywhere that's why we have a catch can down there all right and I'm going to take just a second to clean this core support up. This is a total optional deal here, but I do want the car to be nice and clean. I don't want leaking oil if I can help it. All right, so far we are looking the same. I'm getting ready to switch over the uh, coolant fan assembly. Looks like it has one more port up there. Not a fan of that, but it does look like in there they come with a plug, so I guess that's cool. And that's going to be the number one failing point of this, I'm sure. Yeah, we're going to start taking our uh, fans out. I believe they're 10 millimeter. There, 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 there. That slides up. And slide it back down there, tighten them down, and put it back in the car. And the reason I'm doing this, these are 10 millimeter by the way, the uh, reason I'm doing this in the grass is because these are very fragile. And I don't want to hurt them. And the grass is soft. Makes sense. You want to be very careful putting these onto your new radiator. Last thing you want to do is mess it up after doing all this work. And I did manage to find some fender washers. I was hoping to find another washer to take up that little bit of slack, but I did not. And honestly, I'm getting tired of looking. If there is a bolt and nut company, wink wink, 
that would like to sponsor the channel maybe I would uh, definitely be inclined to entertain that idea where did my threads go that's not good that's not good at all that bolt won't work there which is cool because this one's bigger and a different thread but guess what it's gonna work yeah you don't have to work yeah. All right, so the factory hardware they sent will not work, which is cool. I mean, not really, but you know. You don't get my sarcasm by now. I won't get it. So we're going to send the Ugga Dugga machine some stun to kill. Just hammer them down there and hope for the hold. Let's find out. Work like a charm. Not sure we get that where we need it. Actually works better because it is a little bit bigger bolt and it fits that washer a lot better. I'm very happy about that. All right, there are O-rings in these. That one's trying to come out already. So make sure everything's seated properly. And try your best not to lose it. Actually, probably wait till you get some vehicle to pull these out. But I just kind of want to do a little inspection on them. Make sure everything's all good. This side has an adapter in it, as well as this side does. Looking pretty good until we get it in there and find out we're not. Got all of our bolts down. That's in its little spot. That's all tight. Get a knife, cut that off. I'm going to wait till we get in the car to do that. All right, installation is reverse of removal. I see our main problem being transmission line. We'll just try and play it cool. How about that? Should have stepped inside the bottle. Yeah. Beautiful. Now make sure you got the little rubber pads down there at the bottom. They're perfect. And perfect. And then we'll start fighting our lines to put back on. Uh, this is probably the hardest part of the job, getting them to line back up. Uh, if you've ever done brakes or a transmission, same thing, transmission lines, they're always a pain. Just take your time. Make sure you don't cross them because they'll leak and they will fight you. Probably the rest of the time you own the vehicle into your place, either the line or more or whatever it screws into. So take your time on that for sure. I'm going to put my lower radiator hose on first before I do the transmission cooler line because I think it'll give me a little bit more room. Honestly, that's why I had the hose clamp on upside down last time. For that same reason. So let's find out. Yeah, that's on the radiator, which is good. Transmission line out of the way just a little bit. Get ready to release our clamp. Make sure it all stayed in place. Big guy. I like it. I like it a lot. Alright, now we'll fight with our lower hose. If you guys kind of wonder. Why I don't really show like putting hoses and stuff back together. Oh, cool, I dropped my plastic cap. That's awesome. Don't worry about that later. Uh, usually because they fight me like when I'm recording. And if I don't record, I actually go pretty easily. And that looks like it doesn't fit at all, which is awesome. Not really something I could have tested outside of the car, unfortunately. Yep, that doesn't fit at all. So we're going to take that little adapter out. Cool. Trying to loosen up the other part. That doesn't fit, so we use a 19 millimeter. Oh, not a good thing with jack those are actually loose. That is not good. So if you can, I mean, obviously you're going to check them, but if you can check it beforehand, uh, check and make sure that's all the same thread and same size and all that good stuff. And here we go. Let's begin the battle. I wish I knew an easier way to get these thread. But Unfortunately, do not. And that feels cross-threaded, so we will not proceed. We will back up. Back up, Terry. Put it in reverse. 18 millimeter I threw down here. 16, actually. Yeah. All right, I think I got it. It's feeling good so far, so we're going to send it. Oh, yeah, we're good. 
we are good. I'm gonna probably regret doing the top first, but oh well. Had to be done one way or another. Right, that's pretty good. Now, the real fun begins. One thing I just seen that I did not know about because it had been undone for a long, long time. Let me bring it in here. Now my hands are dirty. All right, when you're going to take this apart, uh, there's a little bracket here. It clips on there. It's hard to see dimension through the camera. Yeah, it clips on there. And I guess there's a plate that went there or something. I uh, probably took that off a long, long time ago. Or maybe it was took off before I got the car. But yeah, you know, to undo that, it'll make your life easier. All right, we got both of our lines on. Uh, on that bottom hose, I, I would definitely suggest doing it first because your top hose does get in the way. And this is on a rubber line, so you can fold it out of the way. It gets you a little bit extra room. Uh, but I did opt to use an open-end wrench while threading it in. And then I used the... Uh, line wrench for the final tighten just because the open end wrench was a lot easier to slide it on instead of trying to line it up you know, just a lot easier so keep that in mind definitely do your final tighten with a line wrench uh, prevent stripping those threads or stripping the head of that bolt out i should say and we got this side in it's all tight it went pretty easily so we're gonna throw our cap back on plug our fan up put our upper radiator hose on do our little block off piece and uh should be ready to fill her up stab ourselves in the hand. Tighten that up enough to break that nipple completely off. Close up the fan. Put our little lock back in our fan. I ain't putting dielectric grease in there because I don't have any. Same thing as the bottom of that. You want to make sure that little rubber piece is lined up on the top of your radiator. That's what keeps it in position. All right, we got everything buttoned up. Did a double check just to make sure everything's all connected, and it is. So we're going to start filling up some coolant, and then we got to bleed the system. Now, I'm sure there'll be controversy whether you're using Dex Cool or the green stuff. Um, I've seen green stuff running these. The only thing I can say from my years of working on cars is if you're going to run green coolant make sure you completely flush the system out there should be no trace of um i don't even remember what's called dex cool uh, the orange stuff there should be no trace of that because if you mix the green stuff and the orange stuff together i've seen it like mud up and basically turn the concrete and destroy a coolant system so keep that in mind uh, i'm putting dex cool back in here that's what these come with uh, 94 through 96 I'll run deck school, believe it or not, 93. Uh, run regular green stuff because that was just a Vortec motor. But yeah, these run deck school. That's what I've run in them all the time I've ever had one. Never had no issues. So we're going to start filling it up. Now they make 50 50, basically pre mix uh, coolant. Um, and if you're completely new at automotive work, that wouldn't be a bad idea. You don't have to worry about trying to guess what's what. But in my honest opinion, you're buying a half a bottle of antifreeze and half a bottle of water. So uh, I want to say these are two gallons. So basically pour a gallon of straight cooling in, fill this up with water per se. Uh, actually, I got some distilled water. You're supposed to use distilled water and I have some, so I'm actually gonna use that. But uh, yeah, it's, usually it's a gallon and a gallon. Put a little bit in here. Obviously keep an eye out for leaks. If everything's good tight, shouldn't have no leaks, but doesn't always happen like that. Just happen to have some distilled water laying around. And if you're asking yourself why you use distilled water, uh, it's supposed to prevent corrosion. That's what I've always been told. So we have it, and uh, we're going to use it. I think it brings a boiling point down too, because I know you're not supposed to boil distilled water on a stove. I don't want to say like as soon as you touch it, it won't really explode or nothing, but it'll it'll get bad real quick. I'm not about to find out. Okay, that takes a little less than two gallons. About a gallon and a half. That'd be alright. I'd rather have more coolant than water any day. We're gonna bleed it out, so we're gonna lose some. Regardless, there's gonna be air bubbles in the system as it just bubbled. Now, bleeding my LT1. 
There's probably two ways you can do it, but I'm going to do it one way. Uh, there's a little bleeder valve right here. Sometimes it's a flathead screw. This one looks like an 8 millimeter. I'm going to put the cap on, pressurize the system, start the car up. I'm going to loosen this up. Your distributor is down there. Uh, my car is at a pretty good angle, so I'm pretty sure all the water is going to be off of that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start the car, run it, loosen that up. Uh, once you see water come out of it, tighten it back up. Usually you're pretty good. Um, double check your coolant. And I've always had really good luck with these. Uh, you can squeeze the hoses, try and help get air bubbles out. They do make a spillless funnel. I've got one of those. Never used it on an LT1. I don't think it would work that great. Reason being is you're trying to get the air out of here. Which you think it would come up, but it's got to go down so far. Now this come right over here, yeah, it'd probably work out perfect. But that's just my experience. I've dealt with it. So that's how we're going to roll. If you know a better way, you can leave it in the comments for sure. I'm always open for suggestions. But I've done about 20 of these radiators, and it's never failed me yet. All right, that's a 7 millimeter. My bad. I always get them wrong. I do the same thing on the dashboard, too. Like, all the bolts that hold the dash in is 7 millimeter, except the one behind the speedometer cluster, which is a 5.5. It's a total pain to get to. Yeah, 7 millimeter. I don't know why I always think 8. I can tell you why I always think 8. Because that's 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, even number. They always use them. Figure that'd be eight. Yes, I don't know. Why well, use 13 millimeter then? Hmm? All right, I'm gonna go find my keys. We're gonna fire this thing up and bleed it. All right, let me know when that thing starts bubbling. <laughs> Obviously, you want to kind of walk around, check, make sure you don't have any leaks. If you're like me, you got wet concrete or you spilled a bunch of coolant, well, there's a box. Throw it under the car. So now we can tell if we got any wet spots. That's another reason why I cleaned everything off the of brake clean. I'm trying to prevent any dripping. We're going to have a little bit there. But yeah, we just want to make sure we don't have no major leaks that are going to cause us any problems. Really, any leaks, to be honest. So we're at 145. I'm getting heat through the vents, which is very good because my black car doesn't have heat. But we're steadily going up, so hopefully we get to 195, our fans will kick on. It's another thing you want to check, and uh, we'll be all good. All right, we hit 197, and our fan kicked on, which is good. I want to say only both fans kick on when the AC is on. The AC doesn't work on this car. I'm not going to fix it until summer. So 
So look forward to that video. It's a pain. I've done it before. Yeah, we've cooled back down. We don't have any leaks on our cardboard, so I'm about to wrap it up. So I was going to wrap up this video. Uh, pretty happy with this. One thing I do want to include that I didn't earlier. Uh, check your oil and transmission fluid because those coolers, uh, they do have a little bit of uh, reserve capacity in them. So, yeah, wouldn't hurt to top that off. Uh, it's not even a quart. It's less than that, I'm sure. Probably be all right without it, but check your oil anyways, you know. Good common practice. Anyways, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we got more work to do on Fleetwoods. Have no fear. There's more. Uh, anyways, appreciate you watching. Remember, you won't know what you can do until you try. Get out there and fix your ride. See you.